It's a real pleasure to be here. I didn't actually expect to be here at all uh, a couple of days ago, but I bumped into Mitchell at um, the, uh, the Liveworks event in Boston, uh, which has happened this week. We were, we were one of the partners there at the ThingWorks event, uh, part of PTC Group. And uh, Mitchell says, hey, Nigel, uh, you're in town. Why don't you drop down and uh, uh, speak at this particular event? So great turnout, fantastic. So um, yeah, I want to just share um, what for me personally has been an amazing journey over 15 years now um, and um, I hope that we're not one of the uh, companies that is less than three years old and goes out of business <laughs> um, and um, thanks Jim that was really great um, great overview with regards to IOT and where we're at it is very complex um, and I think as a company um, that we are right here and now in terms of what we've got because we are about platforms and APIs um, very much so. It's been a long journey. Um, so effectively we have a platform now that's IOTX and I'll lead you through the journey of how we got to this particular platform. Um, so in, in the year 2000 when we uh, first dreamed up the idea of um, the fact that Mobile network operators, at some point in the future, would send data over mobile networks. Bearing in mind, in the year 2000, mobile operators were really just getting into texting. Um, we thought that there would be some form of business that we could drive out of that scenario. And um, at that point in time, we didn't know that it would be machine to machine, but it became clear in about 2001, 2002, that there was this spec coming over the horizon called machine to machine. Um, we were probably into it about five years too early uh, because I don't believe that machine to machine really started to take off, certainly not for our company until about 2004-2005. So as an entrepreneur and from a blank sheet of paper starting up a completely new company, we actually went into a loss making position probably to the tune of about half a million dollars over a two to three year period. But I'm a big believer in sticking to knitting. Yeah? have a fantastic business idea and just keep driving it and keep refining it and that's exactly what we've done for 15 years. The early years in terms of the innovation timeline we um, started to um, deal with different mobile network operators particularly in the UK and we're the first company to take away um, M2M tariffs and, and an undertaking to give us the call data records at the end of each month from um, Orange back in those days, which is now EE or perhaps even BT, um, British Telecom. But um, I remember sitting in the room, there was about 16 execs from Orange at that point in time, all wanting to know what this thing called machine to machine was. And we left that room with, uh, with the first uh, undertaking to give us the tools that we needed to start on billing for machine to machine. And then we had a telephonic or, or two in those days, and then Vodafone. So we started to build up integrations with different network operators in the UK and to provide cellular SIM cards out from machine to machine. Around 2005, we realized that if we were continuing to build integrations with network operators, we'd need to build a proper platform. That took all the friction out of it so we could continue to integrate multiple different network operators around the world and offer services out to the client. Now it also became very clear that to start servicing multiple clients that were starting to connect <coughs> tens of thousands of connections and that they would get to hundreds of thousands of connections or even millions over the due course of time, you weren't going to physically be able to do that manually with staff. You had to build the automated processes in. So we started to take the friction out of the connectivity, out to the enterprise clients by building the functionality for self-provisioning and self-managing of connectivity onto the platform. At that point in time, the platform was called Oasis, um, which was short for Online Activation System, although it did much more than just activate SIMs. We continued to do that through 2006-2007. Uh, we built a CRM system in there, and we also then um, realized that we needed to build the specific billing algorithms, uh, which were designed for machine-to-machine. Now, we were the only company really thinking in this mode at that point in time. Um, and effectively, the mobile network operators have been designed to service consumers and corporates with things called mobile phones, smartphones. They've not been developed from the ground up specifically for machine to machine. So the other thing we did was also to build a backhaul infrastructure that was extremely resilient. Resilient to the point that 
we could lose 75% of our backhaul infrastructure and we still run at 99.9999% uptime, which we have done. On top of that, networks are what's called lossy networks. They lose packets of information, they're inefficient. And there is um, an element of a technology that we've woven into our network services, our backhaul infrastructure, that um, mitigates against packet loss. So it optimizes the resilience and the speed at which data is transferred over networks. So this is our core technology, a platform and a backhaul infrastructure, which has been designed uniquely from the ground up for machine to machine. We also built scalability into it. We realized that at that point in time that very, very early on, um, it wasn't going to be just about connectivity over network cellular services, it was going to be connectivity over other different wireless protocols, um, satellite and cellular and uh, eventually low power radio. So we built scalability into the backhaul infrastructure and, and the whole platform play. So I want to fast forward because I do believe by the time we got to 2010 we started to look at what we'd built to that date and thought, wow, if we continue to build this, this could be extremely disruptive as a technology. So bear in mind, we've been in the, the game for about 10 years um, and um, we started to um, release um, an, the next version of, of the platform and started to work towards what we now term uh, the IOTX platform, Internet of Things Exchange platform. And from that point in time, we, um, we added satellite um, connectivity we were approached by Imarsat so we integrated with Imarsat, London uh, Stock Exchange based satellite company. We've uh, integrated Iridium, the US satellite company, Avanti, which is higher capacity 3G satellite in London. And um, the platform was developed to be agnostic. So in latter, ter latter years, we've also now moved into um, connecting in low power radio. So we're now sitting at a stage in time whereby we've got the IoTX platform and it services cellular, anywhere in the world, any type of cellular, any carrier, satellite, low power radio, and we'll be moving into Wi-Fi shortly as well. So this is an integration timeline. This shows some of the brands that we've integrated into the platform. Um, this, uh, this is extending um, pretty much every, every month as we go by at the moment. So we're offering global agnostic and diversified wireless connectivity, all using private APNs, all built to a resilient and scalable um, uh, feature set um, across the world. So it's resilient, scalable, manageable and secure. It means that you can manage as an enterprise client anywhere in the world can manage their entire connectivity using a single pane of glass. It means that we can provide consolidated billing with the billing algorithms. Companies don't want multiple bills from multiple operators. They don't want to be engaging with multiple teams of support teams and tech staff for, 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 for dealing with connectivity issues and connectivity challenges. And they want expertise and expert consultancy up front so that they can get to market quick with their end products. So what we've ended up with is a set of platform services in one platform effectively, which is to do with subscriber management, building and monetization, and data routing. And by data routing, I mean getting data from A to B and to C if necessary, uncompromised when it's meant to get from A to B. So IOTX provides these primary services for all connectivity types. And we've ended up with really something that we term a unified access connectivity environment. It's abstract and agnostic towards network devices and ty data types. It's API based, so it's extremely light as an integration for mobile network operators. And because we, um, we've built the backhaul infrastructure and the way we've designed it, we can create real time viewable data. We create a virtual state of the network status um, offline. Scaled, resilient, secure. And it enables our end customers, our enterprise companies, to monitor, manage, and monetize all endpoints, devices. But about, about a year ago, um, 
something really interesting happened. PTC bot thing works. And I'm not sure how many of you in this room know what PTC is, but it's, it's effectively, it was, it's a company that had design software, some really good design software, that is, is used for designing many, many different types of um, consumer and, and industrial um, items. Um, and they made, um, they made a decision that they wanted to get into the Internet of Things world, and they bought ThingWorks, um, uh, which was effectively a platform um, company, but a platform that managed devices, and then followed that swiftly up with a, another purchase of Axida, which was more of an applications uh, platform. And I was thinking, wow, these guys are platform companies. Um, there's not that many connectivity platform companies in the world. But Stream Technologies is sitting on IoTX, which is, which is a platform for managing connected services. We're one of only maybe three or four companies in the world that has a platform that can manage different types of connectivity services. And I was thinking also that the other companies out there that actually offer a connectivity platform aren't actually addressing satellite 20 extent, and they're certainly not offering connectivity management in the power radio. So I went out to Palo Alto at Internet of Things World about a year ago, today almost, because the Internet of Things World is next week in San Fran. And I started to test the platform with the tech community, and they were saying, Nigel, is this right? Does it do X, it does Y, it does Z? And Hannah said, yeah. And I said, oh my goodness me, do you know guys, what you guys are sitting on here? I said, thanks very much, you've just confirmed what I thought we've got. Came back, and we started to release the platform that we built over a 10 year period internally for internal use for mobile network operators around the world or any other large organizations that needed management of, of, of the Internet of Things. But this has got really, really interesting because you know there's probably 200, 300 tier 2s and tier 3 network operators around the world. There's 220 odd countries in the world, there's something around that. One to two operators in each country. There are a ton of mobile network operators out there around the world who are all trying to figure out how they can provide managed connectivity in the machine to machine Internet of Things world. And the reason being is that they're used to dealing with consumers and consumer branding. Consumer tariffs, nice, big, fat, heavy margins, just um, providing connectivity that is, it has to be good, but it's not going to be critical. Um, and that's a completely different game to the Internet of Things um, sector. As Jim mentioned, you know, the, the value chain in the Internet of Things is very, very complex. And it's very, very complex just at the single cellular level. Never mind once you start to add in multinational requirements of exporting and satellite and then low power radio. So we then look at this platform, which I do believe is quite unique. Um, we actually signed our first tier one operator um, three weeks ago, which was Digicel in the Caribbean. Uh, bear in mind, we released the platform only about eight months ago. We engaged with Digicel in November. We started dating it a little bit for them and, we, and branding it in the Digicel um, uh, branding colors um, in January. And that actually um, is, 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 is now being signed off. And Digicel, first mobile network company in the world to take our platform on a license basis. And we've got a ton of other companies that are coming on the flight path. So what we've got now, effectively, is this platform that is, 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 is acting like a, a, a glue um, for an ecosystem that we're building around it. And um, you know, we, we, we do um, work with uh, companies such as um, what, what you know, um, it complements what we do very nicely because we get data from A to B and then we can push it through what you know, and they can then uh, use their uh, data service exchange um, on that data. Uh, we work very closely with, uh, with the team at Arm and uh, we work very closely with other companies uh, such as such as ThingWorks. And we're adding different layers of value in. But what we really believe we're doing here, and this is the, one of the major barriers, I think, to the billions of devices that have not yet been connected, is we're driving down the total cost of ownership. To date, the market has been taking out what the market will bear in terms of cost. If we're going to get to these 20 billion devices, 50 million devices, whatever, it's a big number, we've got to drive down the total cost of ownership. And Jim was talking about the actual cost of the devices coming down, the cost of the microprocessors coming down. 
but I think all the other components within the value chain, not least the connectivity aspect, has to be driven down. And I think stream technology is a fantastic situation to help drive that down because as a, as, as a traditional but very specialist um, network service provider, so we've got a very healthy business whereby we've got hundreds of enterprise clients that are connecting, connecting, connecting every day on contracts that are minimum of two years, probably some of them reaching five years and beyond in smart metering. You know, our, 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 our revenue keeps going up and, 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 and the margin keeps increasing, particularly as we move into 4G now, which allows us to drive down the, 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 the cost of connectivity to the end users and the end enterprise clients, because at the end of the day, we're still privately, fully privately owned company. No external debt, no external investment. And so we're extremely agile. We've been reinvesting in systems. We've just been automating the process and taking the friction out of the platform. And now through the platform, we can enable other network operators around the world and service providers to manage Internet of Things connected devices in an extremely efficient way themselves as well through the IoTX platform. And that in itself starts to create a bit of a rolling stone with some momentum. Because in return for that network operator adopting the platform to manage their own country connectivity, Stream, in reciprocal arrangement, gets a wholesale footprint in that part of the world. So this is really interesting what's starting to happen. And it's fascinating for me because, you know, in the year 2000, a blank sheet of paper and some kind of vision to where we are now, to get up every day of your life and live and breathe machine to machine the internet of things and a platform and keep refining and building the company, it has never ever been more exciting than it is today. And um, I think we're just on the cusp of something really, really big here. I think it is the next um, industrial revolution. I think uh, the next five years are gonna be fantastic for those companies that have been in it already, have been in it for a good few years. It's great times, but for anybody starting a business, uh, any SMEs or entrepreneurs <coughs> and, and, and new starts here, I would just say, jump right in. It's a terrific time to get in. Thanks very much.